Paschal mystery refers to the passion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ by which he frees us from sin and enables us to become children of God. It refers to those events at the end of our Lord's life when he is arrested and then taken to judgment and tried and mocked and then led up to Calvary and crucified and also when he's buried and then rises again. And these are the events through which Christians believe Jesus Christ saves the world. In fact, the major part of the four Gospels is about these moments that we call the passion. The passion isn't in the sense of having a, a passion for sport or a passion about life. It's not that kind of notion. It's about to undergo suffering. Passion from passio in Latin to undergo. And we believe by this undergoing of suffering, Jesus Christ saves the world. We use the word atonement, which is a very useful word because it means to make up for. He makes up for our sins, the sins of the whole world, by this sacrificial offering, this intention, the divine love of which is so powerful that it overturns all the sin and bears the pain and cost of sin in itself. But the word atonement also sounds like at one meant, which shows the result of this act. It brings together heaven and earth, which have been separated by sin and by the sins of all the world through history. In this wonderful fresco of the crucifixion, painted by Giotto for the lower church of San Francesco in Assisi in Italy, we see the moment when Christ is on the cross, his side pierced, his body showing the wounds of scourging. It is a scene of great pity and emotion. Angels by Christ show their distress in their gestures of hand rigging, weeping, and these gestures are echoed in the figures at the feet of the cross. Notably Mary, who has swooned in her pain and suffering and is being tended to. Let's also look at John though, and the Magdalene. John looks at Christ, and the Magdalene kneels at the foot of the cross, kissing the feet of her saviour. I'm really struck by the way Giotto has also depicted the women that stand behind the evangelist John, showing their depictions of grief in such dramatic nature. The other side of the crucifixion, St Francis, holds up his hands to the cross. We of course know that St Francis had the stigmata and that his followers saw him as a second Christ. And I think this is what Giotto is emphasizing in choosing to put the figure here at the foot of the cross. Only one who was truly human and truly divine could bring about this union between heaven and earth. Only one who was all powerful and also all innocent could be the sacrifice that would take away all sin for all time. The atonement does several things. It repeals our judgment, it unites heaven and earth, it defeats the claims of the devil and of justice against us, it fulfills all the promises of the Old Testament about the one who would suffer, the suffering servant. When Jesus Christ was buried in the tomb, his soul went to the dead and freed those who had been waiting from the Old Testament period for the coming of the Messiah so that they could enjoy heaven. The death of Christ brings about the forgiveness of sins, not just of those who are living, but of those who are in the past, and also is the power by which the sins for future generations would be forgiven. Piero della Francesca painted this remarkable fresco in his native San Sepolcro in Italy. It's not in a church or cathedral, however. Rather, it, he painted it in the council chamber. And the idea was that the magistrates would pray before it before starting their business. So it is a spiritual image in a secular place. Christ dominates the composition. He steps forward out of the tomb. It is the moment of his resurrection. Piero emphasises the classical beauty of the body of Christ. However, the wounds of the crucifixion are visible 
particularly the bleeding wound in his side, but also the marks left by the nails on his hand and feet. I like the rather human gesture, also in the way that Christ's stomach is rippled as he steps forward out of the tomb. The motion of Christ is in direct contrast to the sleeping figures of the soldiers at the foot of the tomb. Christ comes out into the dawn of the new day, emphasised by the stillness of the landscape behind him and the light just emerging. Piero was interested in perspective and actually trained as a mathematician and his compositions are characterised by a sense of stillness and an interest in perspective and I think we see this in the way that he shows the resurrection. The resurrection, make no mistake about it, is the belief of a bodily rising of Jesus Christ. Some people think his spirit lived on or his message lived on or the Romans made a mistake and didn't, didn't quite do the job properly which is uh, nonsense. This was a very important criminal to be executed and blood and water came from his side to show he was truly dead when they pierced his heart. So Jesus was truly dead, but he truly rose as well. There are many witnesses who tell us this and it changed the apostles. We know that St. Paul speaks of 500 witnesses at one time and Jesus appeared for a period of 40 days after his resurrection, he ate and drank with his disciples. He let them even touch him to prove and overcome their doubts like with St. Thomas. He said, touch the holes in my hands and feet and put your finger into the hole in my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. His doubt actually helps us to wrestle with the evidence that is before us that really demands a verdict that Jesus Christ rose is a fact of history and stands the test of evidence and the test of time. But the resurrection is not just the great proof for us to believe in Jesus. It also tells us that there is a new life now. His body was raised glorious, never to die again. There is a new beginning for humanity in this resurrection. In that body we see our own humanity rise and become glorious again. And he promises us that if we follow him, we will rise. And that's the meaning of his ascension. Forty days after his resurrection, he ascends to heaven. And it's the final completion of his mission on earth and the beginning of a new creation in a new reality that has been inaugurated by his resurrection, the reality of the kingdom of heaven and the new creation. And it's to that that our own humanity uh, is drawn.